All right, so who am I here with today? My name's Adrian. Um, I actually gave my, myself a nickname recently. Initially, I thought it was, to be honest, I thought it was kind of weird. Okay. But I, now you got me interested. You got me leaning over, in. <laughs> over time, I realized it was a thing because um, people really do start calling you that. Like I know somebody called Monique the speaker. Right. Everybody calls her that. Guess what people? Guess who people call when they want somebody to speak at their event? They call Monique the speaker. Right. Indeed. So it's like it's like psychological programming. So my nickname is the Product Wizard. Okay. And that was very strategic because obviously I'm a product builder, okay. founder, creative engineer. I've been building products for 10 years. I started off building physical products, engines, electromechanical devices, things you can touch and feel and go around, mm -hmm. and then eventually transitioned to tech uh, for the last half of my career, which has been about five, six years now. Right. So I'm a founder. I've built a few startups. Uh, some of them got quite far. Other, others died, yeah. uh, as, as you would imagine in the startup space. Failure is a great teacher. This is where you learn. If all you're your listening, lessons. yeah. If, if you're, you're listening, if you're listening. If <laughs> otherwise, you're listening. Yeah, otherwise, it could just make you destitute. It could, no, it, no time fast. It could, it could leave you pretty, pretty, pretty jacked up. <laughs> um, so that's what I do. I, in my day to day, I work with founders mm -hmm. and technology companies, and I help them build and scale products. You know, it's interesting. I haven't seen a lot of people who started off in hardware who go to software. And maybe that's just because I'm young, like I haven't been around a lot. But mm -hmm. I've observed that they they don't have perfect overlap when it comes to abilities and skills. What did you learn from building hardware that trans translated well to building it's, software? That's a really good question. And that statement actually might not actually hold true. Okay. Because what did we build before we built physical, before we built software? Physical product. How long did we do that for? <laughs> Forever. Well, in comparison to how long we've been building software, how long have we been building things as people? Yeah, a lot longer. A lot longer. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the concepts for building software were abstracted from, mm -hmm. you know, lean. Yeah. Got, well, that's from lean methodology, right? That's from manufacturing. Right. It was borrowed over and then adapted to software. Where did that start? That started in factories? Started in factories. Mm -hmm. uh, Lean, I believe, was a Japanese manufacturing sort of framework and whatnot. But a lot of these frameworks actually started off from manufacturing, getting things done, working right. together, and eventually translated to software. So for me, having built very complex, you know, I was an engine designer for a while, mm -hmm. right? So that's as complex as you can get. Just the structural, structural way you think about it, right? So when I think about like, when you're designing in 3D CAD, you have what's called a, um, a modeling tree, mm -hmm. which is how you structure the parts. This part fits here, it's on this, it's on this. These three together, it's called an assembly. Okay. And these three go together, right? If something changes here, something changes here, right? When you build a software, it's the same thing. You've got all these branches, you've got functions, things are grouped together. Mm -hmm. So the abstraction for me was almost natural. It, it just right. made sense. When I look at code, I'm like, yeah, but of course you're going to have a tree. Yeah. That's how you're going to structure it. <laughs> right? So there's a complete direct overlap. Matter of fact, I would go as far as to say I think more people from hardware should get into software mm -hmm. because they come with so much more depth of experience. It wouldn't take them any time at all to figure it out. No. No. Wow. The foundations are already there, right? Mm -hmm. You know how to put things together. Matter of fact, when I'm building an engine, mm -hmm. I got to think about how a human's going to abuse it, heat, right? The elements, weather, the material, mm -hmm. there's so much. It's got to fit, physically fit together at the micron level. But software, I mean, you got have a lot you're doing with the software as well, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. But in terms of handling that complexity. It's so abstracted for you. It, it's, like, you, you already have the foundations for you to just learn how to do this thing on this right. side. So for me, it was sort of a natural transition. It, it, it didn't feel like, oh, I'm, I got to learn this new concept. Yeah, like it, it, was, it was already there. Plus, I studied in engineering. I had coded in school. I did mm -hmm. some like very low-level programming assembly which is like yeah as low as it gets that's, it's, that's like Megan the Stallion knees to the floor like, <laughs> in terms of code yeah. you can't get low assembly machine code 
right? So that's where yeah, I started off. Yeah, so it's like right above binary. Right? It's like, yeah. That makes a ton of sense, though. What, what you talked about is like manufacturing hardware prepared you for software so mm. perfectly mm -hmm. because it's just a lower level version of software. Software is doing things in the world digitally. Mm -hmm. Hardware is doing things in the world. When you're building... Yeah, it makes total sense. Well, ultimately, it, it comes down to this. I don't, my day-to-day, -day, I don't write code. Very little. Um, I build products. Mm -hmm. And when you abstract at that layer, we're basically asking the same questions. And then pepper flakes hit me. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to shoot out. Mm. See what they're talking about. Mm. We're asking the same questions, right? What are we building? Who are we building it for? Why do they want it? Mm -hmm. How do they want it? How much do they want to pay for it? When do they want it? Can we build it? Do we have enough people to build it? Do we have enough money? Do we have enough time? Is this the right time to build it? All right, let's do that five times fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rap song right there. <laughs> build it better. Um, so I'm asking the same questions when I'm building physical products. I'm asking the same thing with apps. It's just that we can build things on this side a little faster. Mm -hmm. Well, depending on the product, but you know, we can iterate a little faster than. And you can afford more mistakes. Depends on the. <laughs> <laughs> We're leaving that in. <laughs> that That's a meme. Yeah. That's a meme. Yeah. <clears throat> ah, me uh, um, you can build things depending on. I don't want somebody to iterate too fast on my pacemaker. Well, not that I want a pacemaker. <laughs> or the software that it's going to run on. Don't want you to iterate fast on that. Take your time with that one. So it depends. But generally, yes, a couple of guys together in a room, you can write something, build something, ship it to the you know to the whole wide world mm -hmm. in theory, right? Um, I actually designed my own medical device. It was uh, about six, seven years ago. I spent a whole year by myself um, working on it after work. Um, and I had no medical device background at the time. I just wanted to build this thing. What prompted that? So I was working. I was working with a doctor who had this idea for something. I just wanted to, believe it or not, I wanted to flex on myself. <laughs> okay. um, at the time, I was like, man, I want to build something. Right? I've always been a builder. I wanted to put something together, and I was like, this sounds like a cool project. Um, it's funny we were talking. We were having a conversation earlier about like just doing stuff. Me building that project over that course of that year, designing it, I'd also documented everything officially. It wasn't just like a project at home that I'm tinkering on. I was doing mm -hmm. documentation. Like if I got hired by a medical device company and they wanted to submit this product to the FDA, I did all the documentation required to do that by myself. Wow. Okay. At home. If the clearance for the FDA, from what I've heard, is extensive. It's it's, 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 crazy. It's, it's it's mind blowing. It's a lot of money, but I did all that by myself because I wanted to flex. So I was mm -hmm. like, "Hey, I want to do this. I've learned this thing in school, and I want to do it." Um, but fast forward a couple of years, I actually get hired by a medical device company doing auto injectors, and I built an auto injector. So imagine somebody shows up for a job interview and says. Oh, I built my own one of these things. Yeah, it's per my, perfect my, proof of work. Yeah, in, in my spare time, I, <laughs> built, I built one of these things at home, and yeah. I actually physically built it, too. And I was like, here you go, take a look. <laughs> and, and they're then, like, wait, is this a joke? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like, sure, you can work for us. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, bottom line is we still figure out what to build, who to build it for. Mm -hmm. Should we build it? Yeah. Things that I think shouldn't be built, but they are. Um... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of brilliant people. I, I heard Elon Musk talking about this. He was, he was walking around his SpaceX facility. They just today actually got orbital. With you, did you see that? I did not. They went orbital with their uh, Starship rocket, which is their their massive rocket. Mm. They're, they're trying to prepare. They made it into orbit, which is really nice. impressive. That's a big deal. But anyways, one problem that a lot of brilliant engineers encounter is they create this brilliant part that should not exist in the first place. So how can we approach thinking about how to create products in a thoughtful manner that doesn't lead us down the wrong path? Because you can have an IQ of 160 if, if you're not wise in your decision making, it doesn't matter. Good question. Um,
what it comes down to is this. The truth is, so there's twofold. There's a yes, but version. And I, don't, I don't like using but a lot because oftentimes it, it sort of negates your first statement. Uh -huh. However, the but here is that we need people to build things that we never needed, right? Which is not the answer you're expecting. But I'll tell you yeah, why. Yeah, it's a little curveball. It's a, how should we focus on building things that are needed? Because brilliant engineers might design things that we never needed, right? Mm -hmm. And so that they waste our time. I'm saying we do need that. In this grand scheme of innovation, we need a subset of people that are just building stuff, even if it's... Just randomly. Because what if they come across something? They might invent something that we need for something important at some point, right? Some engineer wants to find a way to load Bitcoins on like, I don't know, a Rolex. Cold storage, <laughs> right? The ultimate cold storage, it's in your Rolex. Kind of a useless problem. However, what if, what if they figure it out? Yeah. And now you have some other way of storing. And what if the use case for it comes about in like five, 10 years? What if, what if we figure out how to store bits and just raw metal? Right. Theoretically, we store bits on something that is material, ultimately, right? Mm -hmm. Like transistors. Right. Um, but what if they found a way to load it onto a clunk of steel in some way, going all the way down to like the crystal lattice level? Who knows? Man, you're getting technical. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you don't understand, man. <laughs> We're gonna program the wood to think. Why? We're gonna <laughs> look. You never know, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, out of nothing, we create we create gods. Army of Robots is my favorite. Um, however, your question of... We should just focus on solving problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's really it. Ultimately, people dream up a lot of stuff. And trust me, I'm somebody that I've dreamt, I've dreamt up enough things where I'm just like, it's cool to dream up stuff. What if we build an app that could do this and this and this? Oh, that sounds exciting. The technology guys, the engineers are going to go, yes, I've been dying to use that API. I've been dying to play around with, like, Snapchat's API. And he's just going to say, or she's just going to say, yes, let's do it. Because they want to play with that API. They want to mess around with AR, VR. <clears throat> it's up to you as a founder. you got to focus on solving problems.